Okay, hello. Um, it's the same guy that um, helps me here. Hello. Thank you for having me. Um, so um, what I'll introduce you today is my work. Um, I do art, uh, which is based on um, proprietary technology that I've developed in collaboration with some really smart people, or crazy people, as you call them, <coughs> um, as well as um, 3D printers that are printing not images on paper, but literally 3D physical sculpture, 3D objects. Um, my background is um, I studied art in Bezalel and um, been a high-tech entrepreneur uh, for 17 years, uh, always specializing in technologies of 3D, um, 3D for game, 3D for animation, media, etc. cetera. Um, and three years ago, um, it's really, as they said, it's an addiction. It's sort of obsessive um, need to sort of commit to your passion. So I, I, I've merged my company and I decided to do full-time uh, art. Um, what I'll show today is um, uh, uh, images uh, from my last show, my last exhibition, as well as I'll share with you some of my new work where I'm heading. So what you see now here is a sculpture of a meter and a half. And all of the sculptures are actually an output of a simulation, of a computer simulation that I've developed. Uh, and what I'm searching for is really um, to freeze a moment, uh, an epic moment in a, in a radical situation. In this case, it's a collapse. It's a crash of a wall. And um, I then take the data, the physical data, and I send it to print. And, and sort of there is no human intervention between the code development, the simulation, until the final sculpture. Um, this is a three meter earthquake scene um, and sort of it's a suspension of, uh, it's, a, it's a moment in time while all the street is kind of crashing and collapsing. Um, this is um, also a meter and a half sculpture of an oil splash, it's a kind of a liquid splash. Um, and again, it comes out of um, those simulation and each engine, each code, takes sometimes a year, a year and a half to develop. And many times I collaborate with people that I've never met online, and probably I'll never meet them. Um, and um, as you can see, this is kind of the, the, the sculpture, and it's, it's literally printed layer by layer, micro layers, layer by layer by layer by layer. Um, and um, the next uh, work is, um, a nuclear explosion. Now you may ask yourself wh why I'm from out, you know, kind of doing subject matter that, that are so traumatic. First, I find beauty in, in some of those places. I mean, some of the weirdest of places you find beauty. And it's sublime. In essence, it's horrific, but also it's, it's, it's kind of sh shocks you, right? And, and it has a beauty. Um, this is not a video. This is um, mathematics. This is uh, millions and millions of particles calculated. Um, and then I have it as a 3D data, therefore I can freeze the moment, and very much like CT scanning, I can slice the model into layers, and then I print every layer on those transparent um, uh, plexiglasses. So this is um, a full 3D sculpture. You can turn around, you can go below, and, and sort of the mushroom is suspended in air, right? Um, this moment. Um, on the left, on the floor, you can see a waterfall. Now, if you really think about it, um, so a lot of artists dealt with, um, you know, trying to capture um, similar subject matters, like Turner, you know, used to paint uh, storms, um, and many artists dealt, but what I'm trying to do here is sort of uh, create my own high-speed camera, if you will, but a 3D camera, and then kind of freeze the moment. And, and the sculpture itself of the waterfall, it's it's, it's parsing the data, the mathematical data, to a physical form. And what happens when you stand next to it is you feel as if time is frozen, almost like a, a bullet time. The next scene is um, I, I did uh, accidents, collisions. Now, again, my, my approach in aesthetic is minimalistic. It's not to show you the blood and the glass and the injured, you know, injuries. It's really collision of two objects, a mass. And, and then 
Um, this is the sculpture, it's, it's, it's large, it's like a meter and a half, and this is red Ferrari, because I want those sculptures to be seductive, um, you know, so it has the finish of a car, and, um, and um, really I'm following this kind of uh, new culture that we are faster, bigger, stronger, more fleshier. So this is another sculpture of collision, each one is a meter and a half, uh, two trucks kind of colliding into one another. Um, and uh, the colors I chose uh, for this collision, I'll show you, is um, the silver is of Mercedes and the purple is uh, a purple mat of a Porsche. So, um, and this is of a Lamborghini, the, this red Lamborghini, uh, which is kind of a suicidal act. It's kind of colliding into a column, um, which I find sort of, you know, very, all those moments, I find them very interesting. Um, so there you can see the sculpture. So there is no human touch. The, all through the process, there is no human touch. The, this work is, um, it's um, an eruption, a volcanic eruption. Um, it's a huge scale of uh, simulation of smoke. Um, it's kind of um, massive, and again, each engine, each technology is a whole research by itself. And the, the, the final work was this three meter suspension, if you will, of this moment of the smoke. Um, I'm, I'm invited to do a show in, in, in the Contemporary Modern Art Museum in Rome uh, uh, later this year, and this is uh, the works I'm planning to do. Um, it's kind of a moment it's like a five meter uh, waterfall that is kind of just coming out of the wall, if you will. And uh, the next one is um, a very large uh, tsunami, you now a wave, um, and which is again out of this simulation that you'll see now. I've been surfing um, while growing up and waves for me are a very strong thing and it took me a year and a half to figure out how to do those, this energy of the wave, this mass. And the sculpture arrived two weeks before the tsunami in Tokyo. <laughs> and, uh, when, and I always did it black. And, and when, it, when the tsunami happened, we, my wife and I, we got goosebumps. And it, it was almost like a like, um, prophecy. I don't know. It felt bizarre. It felt like... OK, so now moving to positive things, OK? Um, so this was the sort of searching into moments. Thank you. So for the last, uh, I would say, almost two years already, I, I, so initially I did those kind of catastrophic events, sublime moments, and then I moved into sound, and basically simulating sound waves and understanding what happens. I mean, I'm talking and there is a sound wave and it's actually colliding here with you, but we don't see that. So what I started to do is actually trying, started to simulate sound waves and give those sound waves physical properties in my code, in my simulations and letting those sound waves um, impact objects. And um, so this is a sort of, um, the engine is, is much more robust than you'll see, but here's a good example that shows a 3D sphere that is reacting in real time to the sound. The sound is actually driving the animation, the changing of the color, So um, here's another experiment. Um, and um, then I was lucky to meet um, Massive Attack. Do you know the band Massive Attack? Okay. And um, for me, they were, they were like my heroes. And I had a, an article in Wired magazine. <laughs> and they knew my art. It, for me, it was really impressive. And we started to do a project. This is actually Uncle. Um, but basically, infusing the sound waves into objects and letting the sound waves you know, deform the sculptures. Um, it's almost like... Um, 
Giacometti on steroids, if you will, it, it has, because it's uh, it's not like you know playing with clay. This is almost like a noise, mathematic sound that is interfering the geometries. Okay, so then I took it a step further and I decided to combine dance and, and real-time performance. And so for the last year, I'm actually working with uh, two amazing, um, world-known contemporary, contemporary dance choreographs, choreographs and dancers. Uh, Sharon Eyal, uh, she used to be the uh, house choreographer for Bacheva for the last 10 years and, and Guy Bachar. And we're actually building a new band, if you will. And the, the idea is to do a world show that combines um, live dance, live music, hologram technology, as well as my art that will be responding in real time to one another. Um, and um, so I started um, doing a lot of work on mov movement and analyzing movement. And so in this case, it's using motion capture. Um, so the motion capture here um, is, is being traced by uh, the 3D simulation. Now, every frame could be a sculpture, right? Every, every frame in the show can be printed into a sculpture. Um, and in a minute, you'll see the hologram. So basically, the way the audience will see, you will see the real dancers and some of the characters or the things that happen on stage could be completely virtual. So the hologram technology is as follows. Um, it's based on a, a patent from the 18th century named um, uh, um, Paper Ghost. There is a translucent, transparent um, screen which has a 70, 70 degree angle, a projector, very high resolution projector on the ceiling. On the floor, there is a reflective kind of uh, um, material. So when the projector hits the reflective material, it kind of um, projects it on the on the screen. Now I realize I put the wrong clip there, but then it doesn't matter. Um, so here is um, another evolution in the development. So this hand is being captured in real time by three Microsoft Kinect and our software. You see the resolution of the hand. So I can actually capture the dancers in real time. This quality. This is Sharon dancing. It's all experimentation, it's not my art yet, it's still work in progress and it's going to take us a year. It's a big project, we have 10 dancers, a lot of technology. I have here is basically sort of combining different mediums of creation and pushing the, the language of art forward, if you will, because there is sort of a notion that, you know, in 21st century, technology and art and creation is like sort of in our humanity. And basically, this, in a way, the static work of art is almost the work of the past. I mean, this doesn't mean that people won't continue to paint and make sculptures. There's a whole new uh, artistic language that is being starting to being developed here. Um, so thank you.